Hi, I'm Danny Gorney, writer of Sleepwalkers, Cygnus Imperium, and all kinds of other awesome comics. You can check me out on Instagram at Danny Gorney or follow my recent campaign on Kickstarter. And you're watching Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. Of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Welcome to another episode of Rapid Fire. The concept is simple. It is 11 questions, about 9 to 15 minutes long, give or take, once I edit it all down. And we are joined by a very talented and creative person in the entertainment industry. So who's our guest today? Our guest today is a returning guest. He was on the show earlier this year. And if you love not only uh, literature, if you love his talk on uh what he did in England among his amazing comics with Cygnus Imperium. We are back with the amazing and talented. I should have finished, finished that drink. Uh, all good. <laughs> Let's go. We're rapid fire. Let's fire rapid. We're here with Danny Gorney. How are you doing today, Danny? Doing great, Kurt. How are you? Doing wonderful, you know. So what are you bringing to Two Geeks Talking today? Bringing my first graphic novel, Sleepwalkers. Uh, it's actually the project that got me doing comics in the first place. Even since from before, when we were talking about Sigis Imperium, this was being produced in the background. So I'm really happy to have it out. Uh, it's 110 pages, uh, volume one, Adulting Sucks, and it's on Kickstarter for, uh, now and until November 17th. What is it all about? Sleepwalkers is uh, about alienation and the imagination. So in a dystopian world where getting a degree doesn't mean getting a job, Faith Richmond finds herself graduating into the lurch and watching her friends get ahead while her career fails to start. That's when her subconscious starts leaving her body to become a superhero. And that's when her nightmares begin to come alive. Sounds like real life to me. <laughs> no, it's a dystopian alternate universe. Nothing at all like real life. <laughs> I mean, at all yeah, like real life just like getting a degree gets you a job instantaneously it's it's amazing you know I, that's what they told me when i was a kid uh, yeah i know i got the same speech i, I think I, I think i've been lied to most of my life uh yeah welcome to the 21st century <laughs> postmodernism has rendered truth unstable and everything they ever told you was wrong so then why is this an important story for you to tell this is the project that got me writing fiction i mean i think that that's really important yeah because uh, as you know, I've done grad school and I have advanced degrees. I also had the really great luck of graduating into multiple once in a lifetime financial crises. So trying to find my own way when you thought there was a path there for you is a really hard struggle. And it's one that has taken me a really circuitous route to get around uh, to where I'm now, where I'm really comfortable with what I'm doing, which is working in film, doing creative, writing, and producing awesome content and stories. Like I, I love telling stories. What it is about stories is that they're the mechanism by which human beings describe their actual or ideal place in the world. This is a story where the imagination is literally doing that uh, for my hero and for all of the other characters in it who have superpowers. That's something that I did a lot of work on this sort of idea with my graduate work in my thesis. And I want to sort of bring in a narrativized, broader form and sort of give to my readers. You kind of mentioned in the green room a little bit about this being an autobiographical uh, work of sorts here. Can you kind of expand on that so that the, those that are watching this understand? That? Sure. So this is not autobiography. Okay. What I was saying was this is probably the closest thing to autobiographical I will ever have written, by which I mean... In a lot of my work, I am taking stories, I'm making them weird, I'm finding ways to connect them to ideas I think are interesting, I'm finding ways to have a cool twist where I'm dealing with the story as a whole mechanism. Although I like writing drama and I like writing character relationships, because this book is so long and because this is was earlier in my career, aspects of the concept sort of are more drawn from experiences in my own life. So both fates, depression, being unable to find a job, working in the gig economy, working in a call center. Her situation where, you know, she's watching her friends and just is really confused as to what's going on is the reason she's not successful, something she did, or is it something she is? That sort of suspicion uh, for me as an invisible minority 
is something that I've had with me my whole life. So there's that. And there's like more incidental details. Like she has also studied an equally useless degree that makes her a good thinker philosophy in her case, medieval literature in mine um, and that sort of thing. So it ends up tying together close enough to autobiographical that I'm willing to admit it. You know, looking at the story that you've written here and it semi mirroring your own life of, uh, because it's not autobiographical whatsoever. What writing journey did you accomplish in terms of your emotions when you finally finished this particular story? Um, there's so much more story to go. Okay. Um, when, when I finished production, like pre-production on this story, I was just like, okay, yeah, hold on. This is crazy. And I'm pretty sure I stuck the landing. And I already had a few um, beta readers agree that like we really stick the landing on this one. And I was like, yeah, hold on. So I just spent my entire life saying I don't want to be a writer when I grow up. But as it turns out, I could do this. What? Well, hey, you, you've done a wonderful job with it so far, and and I can't wait to see what else you have in the future as well. But you, you mentioned you had a Kickstarter uh, campaign as well too, and it, that's that's wonderful to see because it's the best way to get, especially something this large, because 110 pages is massive when it comes to a, a comic book. You know, it's not something that you see on the shelves unless you compiled an omnibus of sorts uh you know talk about the campaign and and how it's gone so far and and you guys you mentioned when it uh, ended as well one of the things that's very strange about the project is that i wrote it as a novel so it's in these larger story arcs and and because we wrote it like that the first few chapters are just slow burn enough i had a lot of trouble when they were done pitching them to publishers so having this opportunity to bring it all together, to have this big through the looking glass moment in chapter four and to be like, no, this is a story unit. This is volume one is really valuable. And I think with what I'm putting out there, people are seeing it and it's something they're attracted to. So yeah, we're on Kickstarter. The campaign ends on November 17th and we've got some really cool things up in the campaign as well. So there's like the book as a trade paperback. There's a couple of variant covers. Um, which are great. One of them is by Felipe Obando, who's actually is the illustrator going forward for volumes two and three. Um, Greg, we're on track, had health issues and had to back out. So Felipe, uh, who was my colorist for issue one, stepped up and he kicks ass. So uh, he's doing a very cover. One by AZ Volt, which is gorgeous and weirdly trippy. The more I stare at it, the more I love it. We've got uh, a single issue collector's edition. For, so if you're like a really hardcore comics collector and you don't really like trades, that's the one for you. It's got a little bit of bonus material and some work in progress stuff in there as well. And then we have like some really just totally Danny, very awesome add-ons. One of which actually is issue five as is a single issue. One of the things I hate doing as a creator, even on Kickstarter, is to sell someone a series and not really be able to deliver on that series. So I try and make sure things are done. Uh, when they're done or that like I know how far they're going to go and I'm not over promising. So with issue five being done and available as an add on, you know, there's more story and you're going to have a good sneak peek as to which direction it's going. So I think that's a great bonus for people who are into reading it and just want to see where it's going to go next. Some stickers, some art prints and uh, some shot glasses that say adulting sucks on them. <laughs> there's a lot of drinking in this book. It's definitely a very adult book in that respect. And that's just like the one thing, like it could be in that world and it would just work. And I love doing that in the campaign. Okay. I got to ask, is there a drinking game associated with adulting sucks? No, but adulting sucks. Drinking is a solution that many uh, people bring forward in response to the problem that adulting sucks. <laughs> Thus, this is hilarious and totally awesome to me. <laughs> that's it. There's not really a drinking game. I mean... Drink every time faith becomes miserable is not, don't do that. <laughs> Unless you have a, a kidney, you know, a, yeah. a transplant on hand. Uh, yeah, Jeff, definitely don't. <laughs> There's a few drinking games, like for movies that are kind of okay. Mm -hmm. But if it's for like a TV show, like a random episode could make or break your night. <laughs> and that, that's not even like pre going out to the bars. That's just like you're, you're in the long you long. going out to the bars. That's like your house party. Right. Oh, uh, we're all hanging out. We're all adults. Screw it. Let's get the whiskey out and watch Voyager and drink every time someone starts spouting techno babble and only stop when they do. 
bam, liver damage, you're good, right? <laughs> Gotta love the Canadian healthcare system. Andy, this journey that you've been on uh, as a writer and, and from the various comics that you've created, you know, obviously you have a, a wonderful style of writing and you've had amazing artists that have, have you've brought with you in terms of this creative journey that you've been on. And you mentioned the ones that you've had on here as well as when you did Cygnus Imperium. So I love seeing the, the creative process and, and journey. Are we going to see any uh, behind the scenes or maybe hints at issue two or anything like that? Is that on social media? How, how can we find more about what's upcoming? I have a mailing list and I have socials. I'm up on uh, Instagram as at Danny Gorney. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a link to my link tree to post with the uh, video. Mm -hmm. That's how you can find what's going next. And yeah, we've already got some previews from volume two of sleepwalkers that you can get as part of the campaign. So, um, yeah, we're going interesting, fun, weird, crazy places with more crazy monsters, strange people, insane situations. And of course my protagonist's ongoing trauma. Keep an eye out for me on socials, and I'm usually posting stuff when there's something fun to talk about. For example, we just passed a stretch goal today. Ooh. My Twitter, this postcard from the end of chapter three, we're just making it. It's like uh, Radiant Dawn, the superhero in the book, in front of Nathan, in front of Toronto City Hall and Nathan Phillips Square, like those buildings. So we've already drawn it. Now we're just making it for real. And I'm going to be posting some preview art from the next stretch goal in probably like two hours that's going to be a book plate as though zach wrote it so it's a giant lovecraftian monster and it'll be like this book belongs to insert name here destroyer of worlds you stick that in your book and have a ton of fun all of this stuff is really exciting about the campaign i get to build these world like in world things that are going to be a ton of fun what's exciting about creating a brand new superhero from scratch based off of this particular comic series this idea started off as a superhero adjacent sort of thing and you can you can kind of tell in volume one that the story really is faith her life her friends and the superhero is this escape from that mm -hmm. um but nevertheless this is a superhero project and so when this was in the ideation and story writing steps, um, Diana and I were talking about it. I was like, this should totally be a comic. And then we can make this like a really deep look at the subconscious. Cause if we're not, if I'm not writing this as a novel, we're not privy to face internal thoughts. So we need to externalize this. And we've already got the superhero idea. Well, why don't we have the super, the superhero idea where the superhero only shows up after we flip the page which is exactly how I wrote it, if you take a look. Yeah. So it's always on the page flip, there's a superhero, she's asleep, there's a superhero, she's asleep, there's a superhero. And that's the steps that we go through. In terms of creating a superhero, I mean, because this is more a story about a person and not a story about superheroics, I feel like this doesn't count yet. I haven't done the one character with their tragic backstory and why they're putting on this themed costume to defeat criminals in the night. I haven't done that yet. There is a superhero, but it's a figment of the imagination, not there's a superhero and here, here is his or her ongoing adventures. So I still feel like, although we succeed at the design aspect of superhero who looks like a superhero, there's a cape and everything. This is not the story that goes into those mechanics in the longer term. Now, do I want to write a story like that? Yeah, eventually. But that requires a ton of, I think, building up a character and really wanting to stick with that character forever like thinking of strange ideas i just want to do until they're done that's the great part about the creative process you know you're always thinking of new ideas and new situations to either include into your characters or this story or another story that eventually will come down the pipe i love you know that those things and it also works for film too the craziest idea you can think of can be made into a film you know it's, yeah. it's just it's just amazing to to see that there's no limits other than your own imagination still, even after, you know, the adulting is beaten out of us. Exactly. <laughs> and, and if you can't believe in your own imagination, like what are you going to believe in? If we can't rely on imagination, then, you know, what's worth, why are we living? <laughs> yeah. It's how we build a better future. We have to think of it first. It's how we figure out what we want to do and imagine all the steps to get there and then go through that process. And it's how, we, it's how we prepare ourselves for struggle and hardship and 
the imagination is one of the things that we use to process things that are going to happen. And by guessing at what the future is going to be, even if you're wrong, you're still going through a really good line of thought that's going to prepare you, whatever craziness is coming at us. We've had enough crazy for the last couple of years. You know, I think we need something a little more stable. <laughs> <laughs> We've had so much crazy over the last I, couple I, of yeah. years. Hopefully it's less crazy in the upcoming years. Which just means we have to use your book as as an example of escaping the craziness of our own lives and there live vicariously through you. <laughs> uh, yeah, go for it. Do that. Give me money in exchange for this entertainment. And then use it to help understand why your imagination gives you the power to succeed in the future. I was going to say you're like the next LeVar Burton when it comes to, you know, the whole reading rainbow aspect of imagination. So, you know, I mean, there you go. I, I think it's true that the imagination, if you, if you look towards the future, like you have to imagine what it's like and then do work to turn that into reality when it comes down to it, like things don't happen by accident they might start by accident but you really do have to visualize or work through or whatever it is your mind does in order to take an abstract concept and replicate it or render it into reality stories and the imagination are powerful things danny unfortunately that ends this particular episode of two geeks talking well thank you so much for coming back on the show Thanks so much for having me, Kurt. I had a great time. For those that want to support you, and of course, uh, online and on this Kickstarter campaign, where can we find you and how can we support you on the internet? Sure. So you can uh, support me by going to Kickstarter, searching for sleepwalkers or adulting, and I should pop up. You can find work in progress and stuff like that on my Instagram at Danny Gorney. And if you want to follow what I'm up to and get some free comics, check out my mailing list and I'll send you the link for that. 110 pages in a comic is amazing. So you're not going to run out of amazing content to read and reread for that matter. So pick it up today. All right. I'm just going to follow your lead on this one. Uh, I said that as this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking, you can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. Of course, on our YouTube channel, which is still a lot more updated than our website, which is youtube.com forward slash C forward slash TGT Media. Like I say every week, uh, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talking.